Hello and welcome back to Abstract Linear Algebra, the video series about general vector spaces, general linear maps and similar stuff. Indeed, today's part 21 will be completely about the Kram-Schmidt procedure. We will apply this algorithm we've learned in the last video to an example. So we will see how we can construct an orthonormal basis. However, you already know, we don't start immediately, because first I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And the good thing is, as a supporter, you can just download the PDF version of this video with the link in the description. This can be very helpful to understand the algorithm and the example we explain now. And here the setup is the same as in the last videos, we have a general f vector space, but together with an inner product. Therefore, for every finite dimensional subspace U, the term O and B, orthonormal basis, makes sense. However, if you just take a basis of this finite dimensional subspace, it's in general not an O and B. And that's where the Kram Schmidt process or algorithm comes in. Simply because it's able to transform the original basis into a new one, which is an O and B. And as we have discussed in the last video, we can split the algorithm up into k steps and then it's finished. So it's definitely something you can implement as a computer program. But this is not something we will do here, because here I want to show you a pen and paper calculation. And indeed I think this might be very helpful to understand the algorithm. And for this let's take the real vector space given by the polynomial space, so given by polynomials from the domain minus 1 to 1 into R. We take this one because there we already know a nice inner product given by an integral. And for the real vector space it just means that we integrate the product of the two polynomials from minus 1 to 1. So this is a well defined inner product and now let's take a finite dimensional subspace U. And for example we could just take the quadratic polynomials. Or to say it more precisely, the set of all polynomials where the degree is at most 2. Because there we already know that we have the monomial basis given by 3 elements. And usually we just call them m0, m1 and m2. And as a reminder, they just represent the monomials where the index gives us the power of x. So in particular, m0 is just the constant function. So this is important to keep in mind. And for that reason, we start with the index 0 now instead of the index 1. But of course, this does not change anything, the whole algorithm here stays exactly the same. And in fact, we have to apply the Kram Schmidt orthonormalization because this basis here is not an O and B. This is already easy to see just by integrating the constant function. And actually, we already know that this is exactly the first step in the Kram-Schmidt process. We have to normalize the first vector, so we have to calculate the norm of m0. And moreover, important to know here is, for calculation reasons, you should always square this norm. Because then we can just calculate the inner product without any square root. So this is the norm squared, so in our case it's an integral from minus 1 to 1. And the function inside is just 1 times 1. So not hard at all, this integral is exactly 2. Hence our first new basis element, which we now also call b0, is now given as 1 divided by this norm times m0. So just 1 over the square root of 2 times the monomial. Hence b0 of x is just given by the constant function but not with the constant 1. Now the constant is 1 over the square root of 2. Ok, then let's go to the next step where we deal with the vector m1. So there please recall, we take the orthogonal projection but then we consider the normal component. So essentially what we have to calculate is this inner product here. And we can do this very quickly because it's just the integral from minus 1 to 1 of the constant function times x. And there it's not hard to see at all that this is actually 0. In other words, our b1 tilde here is simply m1 again. 
So you see, the orthogonality of m0 and m1 was already given. But still, never forget, the normalization still has to happen. So we still have to calculate the norm of b1 tilde, which is simply m1. So we know it's just the integral from minus 1 to 1 of x times x. And again, for the calculation, we square the norm to avoid a square root here. And here we conclude that the antiderivative of x squared is 1 over 3x cubed. And then put in the limits and what we get out is 2 over 3. Hence, now we can simply write down b1. It's the square root of 3 halves times m1. And therefore, if we want to write it as a function, we have the square root times x. Okay, and with that, we can go to our last step. And there we take the third vector, which is m2 in our case. And then as before, we have to calculate an orthogonal projection and then take the normal component of it. So we have m2 minus the projection of m2 onto the subspace spanned by the vectors from before. And there you see, we just have to calculate two integrals. And maybe let's start with the one with b1 and m2 first. So essentially there we combine x with x squared. And since this is x cubed and we have to integrate from minus 1 to 1, we get out 0 as well. So this is kind of nice because it means we don't have to subtract this part. However, the second integral here might be more complicated. There we have to combine the constant function 1 over the square root of 2 with x squared. So also not a problem because the antiderivative is simple. In fact, you might remember this calculation from before. So what we get out here is 1 over the square root of 2 times 2 thirds. So it's just the square root of 2 over 3. And now please don't forget, we have to multiply this with the constant function b0. And b0 also has a square root of 2 in, so this will cancel out. So actually we have here minus 1 third times m0. And as a reminder, if you write b2 tilde as a function depending on x, we get out x squared minus 1 third. So quite a nice polynomial in that sense. However, please don't forget, we still have to normalize it. And this means we have to calculate one last integral. And as before and as always, it's best to calculate with this square. Okay, but now you see, we have to multiply x squared minus 1 third times the same. So actually, it's quite a long polynomial now to integrate. But obviously not a problem for us, because we can find all the antiderivatives we need. And we need them for x to the power 4, for minus 2 thirds x squared, and for plus 1 over 9. So actually not so complicated. It's just a little bit work to write it down, but then we have the result. So maybe very quickly, we have x to the power 5 here, we have x to the power 3 here, and then just x at the end, and finally we put in the boundary points minus 1 and 1. And now just put everything together, and then we see we get 8 divided by 45. But with that we have our result, we take the square root of that, and put it in the denominator here. And then we finally have our b2. It's still the nice function x squared minus 1 third, but now with this factor in front. And with that we are done, we found our nice O and B for the polynomial space. So at least for P2, now we have an orthonormal basis. However, you see we can just extend the whole procedure to find an O and B for Pn. And there I can tell you, the polynomials that come out there, maybe with other normalization factors, are called Legendre polynomials. And they are helpful exactly because they form an O and B in this abstract function space. So with these Legendre polynomials, it's possible to do orthogonal projections and so on. But I think this is something for another video. So I really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.